Hello and welcome Canva fans. I'm pleased to be offering you this presentation on streamlining the PR process with Canva. My name is Jean Bianchi. I am the PR specialist at the Voorheesville Public Library. Voorheesville is located just outside Albany, the New York State Capitol. Now, when you think of New York, you may think that it's one big city, but we're actually located upstate New York and very near this beautiful part of the Hudson River. Our library covers about 8,000 residents of which 3,500 are registered patrons. We have a staff of about 25 full and part-time employees. And after being in this building for more than 35 years, we just started a renovation project. Our program planning runs in a two month cycle. This chart shows the programs in the two month cycles with the um, summer reading program as its own special entity. So the events roughly um, total 393, 398 for a year, which is about 7.65 a week, but that's then you need to start including two story times every Tuesday and Thursday, uh, the quilters group on Tuesdays and the movies groups on Thursdays. So that total moves more towards a total of 12 programs a week. All right. So here's a list of all the typical pro program promotions and channels that we use for programming. Um, I'm not going to read them all to you, but basically there's about 12 right here. If we take each event that we promote and multiply it by around 12 different ways, that ends up being 476 promotions in a year. Okay, you're thinking how? How am I going to do all of this? Well, you need to have a plan to help you streamline the PR workload so you can best promote all these great events. So you're going to start paring down. What can you group together? What has a similar feel to it? Maybe something can kind of repeat. Maybe your book discussion groups look the same. Maybe your your cooking classes look the same, have the same feel to them. You're going to pare down and combine your items. After several years on the job, I took a look at everything and I pared and scaled down the sizes of the promo and images into these three, maybe four basic sizes. The biggest hint is that it starts with the square. I'm going to go be going over the entire contents of the slide bit by bit so you don't have to write it all down now. And then I'll be repeating the, the contents of this slide at the end of the presentation. So let's keep going. Are you thinking, yikes, how am I going to do this? Okay, we're going to start with small steps. The first small step we're going to start is by doing an creating an Instagram square. All right, to do that, you're going to go into Canva. You're going to go up to the right. You're going to choose Instagram post. Then you're going, and when you select that, the square shape opens up in a new window and we're going to go. Yay. All right, you're going to start here. So let's start with a topic that you most likely will need to do. Let's start promoting a book program. We're going to use the book cover as the basis for the look of the program. Now I'm going to speed up this presentation, but basically in the Insta um, square phase, you're going to, this is where all your creation is going to happen. You're going to choose your type style. You're going to give a color you're going to really kind of get a feel for it is it trendy is it classic however you want to do it the creative process is in this step and you're going to take a while to do it okay so here we are adding some more elements for social media 
we're going to add um, the brand. Here it is. I have it on the branding folder. These are all logos I use all the time. I, I use them a lot, so they're there. Here's the logo for the library. And there's the alternate logo that I'm not going to use this time. OK, so let's go. Now it's time for the magic of Canva. Yeah, sure. We're going to use Magic Switch, and this really makes it easier for you. We're going to do the Magic Switch. We have our Insta Square. We're going to go up to Magic Switch, select it, pull it down, and we're going to choose the presentation size, 16 by 9. We're going to continue. And there are six pages available there. And we don't need all six, so we're going to go and select the page that we want. We're going to delete all the other ones, not delete, deselect. And I think it's page three. There we go. Three page, page three is what we need. And then we're going to select that, continue. Here we go. Copy and resize. I like that thumbnail. All right, let's choose the copy and resize. Select that. And open presentation. And voila, here we are. It's now resized. Let's do this. It's now resized into your slide format. So we want to make some adjustments. Let's move the logo over a little bit. We can scale it. We can move the book over a little bit. Let's see, and resize it. And now I think I want the date and um, day of the week and time on one line. I'm going to make it bigger so people really know that it's Sunday. That's an important day. That's not a regular meeting day. So we want to make sure that that's nice and big. Make sure that people can register. They know they need to register. Move that up. And let's make it a little more interesting. How about books will be available? Yeah, spell it right, people. That's me. OK, for sale. That sounds pretty good. Now we're going to scale it up a little bit, resize it. And instead of just regular cook books, let's make it a cookbook makes it more interesting for the foodies out there. Um, and we're going to keep going with that. That looks pretty good. OK, now that we have the slot, here we go. Now that we have the slide created, we want to make it to a poster. Go back up to Magic Switch. Choose your 8.5 by 11. At our library, we call that a poster size. You could also make it 17, 11 by 17, a tabloid size, if you really wanted to. Um, you choose that size. You copy and resize. And there we go. And you're going to open it on your 8.5 by 11 new tab. And that's the new slide. Here we go. So when things rescale, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. So now we're going to work on adding and readjusting everything. You don't have to redesign. You're just readjusting what you've set up. You have the look. You don't have to worry about any of that. You just need to make sure that all the elements look nice on the page. Make sure you have the registration information, always important. And we're changing the way we want the wording for the cookbook. And moving that down and over. And let's see again with the time. Um, sometimes on weekend programs, I don't add the ending time. If someone is there, they can stay to the end of the, uh, the day. Um, during a weekday, if things are really busy with kids, I usually put the end time so that parents know when to pick up their kids. Okay, again, we're rescaling the day of the week and the time, and we're moving things around 
to make everything balanced. Now, a lot of times on a poster, quick and easy, just center everything. Um, it's kind of a nice way to balance it. Okay, so now through the wonder of the internet, I can show you three different versions of the poster. There's one, there's two, and there's three. So sometimes I go back and I rearrange things and I still keep it going. Now that we've created our images, let's go over again what the sizes are and then we're also going to talk about where we're going to use them. Again, we started with an Instagram image. It's a square, 1080 by 1080. And then we took that square and we changed it into a landscape rectangle, if you will, with the 16 by 9 ratio. And then we took that and we resized it to 8.5 by 11 for promo posters inside the library and outside. And then that promo poster for eight and a half by 11 can become a display poster. If you don't want to do the magic switch, you can just um, go to your copier, take your letter size file, choose tabloid, which is 11 by 17 and fit to page. That's also a way of doing it. All right, so how and where can we use this square image that we've cre uh, created? Um, we have a bookworm print newsletter that we can use the image for. Um, at MailChimp, when there's an event, uh, I put an image with that, so we can put that inside the, the MailChimp. It, the picture of the image and then the text to go along with it. In social media, the square, we can use it for an Instagram post, a Facebook post. We don't really use Twitter too much anymore, so let's not even bother. All right, we I use the square images an awful lot on the online calendar that we have. Uh, we use Event Keeper. Um, you could also use a square image if you were writing a newspaper article and you wanted to submit some images for the newspaper to use. We have an SNN school newsletter um, that may or may not use your images. You can use the square for post event recap. You can also use the square for um, your uh, inside the school promotion. So we work a lot with the public librarian and we'll send, we work back and forth so we can take an, an event that's for the library. And if we're working with the public school, the, yes, the public school library, then we can share, just send the Canva image over to them. All right, so you might be wondering why I'm not talking about making a Facebook image, because you don't have to. I want you to look real carefully here. Facebook will take your square and it will take your background. Again, we selected that careful background. They choose it, and if you see, there's that extra little space on the side. This is a square. Facebook is more, um, the width is a little bit larger, but they take the color and it works. And so here's a face, here's an image, the square image scaled for Facebook. And I didn't have to do anything. I just used the square and I let Facebook do the work for me. All right. So where can we use the 
the slide or the um, presentation size. Um, again, you can use it in mail you can use it in Mailchimp um, if you want to have something that covers both columns. Um, I use it all the time for a Facebook event. Um, that's just it's the same size. It's done. The text that I use for Facebook event is often the same text that I use for my Facebook post with a little more information if we need to. Um, I make a slideshow with the, um, the slide and that's right at the circ desk. So if the line ever gets too long, they can look at the slide on the screen. You could also use it for a newspaper article, maybe you're not on the school newsletter, and also if you want to do for a post-event recap. Where do we use the posters? Again, that's eight and a half by 11. We use it a lot um, in-house. We have, like on the stacks, we have this plastic thing that you can slide in and you have the poster that can go in there. So we have that kind of stacked on the side. Maybe the children's section has children's posters. The adults, the adult um, book discussions have the book discussion group posters. The movies have it in a different at the end of the column. Um, we have a, a separate large bulletin board where we put the posters in the hallway and also in the community room. So if people are at a meeting, they can look up and they can see the different posters and promotions of the events that are coming up. Um, the community bulletin boards, the post office, the grocery store, the various different restaurants, we can put that up. Um, we can get permission from a variety of places. Um, that's also where we use the, the posters. If the posters go to the school, we use the school disclaimer that uh, this poster is not, you know, whatever. But so the, the poster, if, if you just have to add the disclaimer for the school, that's fine. Everything is safe. Everything is good. Um, all right. So thank you for listening. Um, you can take a look at our library's website. It's vorpol.org because Voorheesville Public Library is an awful lot to spill. All right. And then let's see if I can leave you with this.